Yeah, there's the lock thing. No question, these are chromatic doors, I guess. So it seems. Whoa! 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 Have we seen that before? They turn around? No. The rapid fire turn around, but the character's already fixed in place before the turn happens, so it's like they're fucking, like, drifting through the air. <laughs> like, whoa, that was a fucked up effect. That was clearly, uh, the it best- did, it, it, it didn't spin too- it didn't spin too far. She spun with the camera. Yeah. That was incredible. That's like, because, what? like, it, it fucked up and it had to load her first, <laughs> and then- Yeah. What? When did you- <laughs> the immediate hiccup. I've been here the whole time. That's kind of gross and creepy, could you not? <clears throat> Serious? Bisley? I didn't notice you at all. Oh, I guess your hearing's <gasps> starting to go. How sad. You are insufferable all the time. Mm. Why? Ellipses. So what do you want? Why are you stalking I'm me? I'm not stalking you. I just followed you here. That's pretty much the same thing. But how did you do it? You were totally silent. Are you Batman? I already told you I'm not. No, I'm a robot, dummy. Remember? Back in the AB room when we met? Yeah, that's still a consistent timeline. I, I remember. Oh yeah, that other time she jumped super high. You also jumped super high all the way up to the ceiling. Curious about that graffiti? Graffiti? Oh yeah, that. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. <laughs> Did a kid write that or what? Why do you say that? Well, they managed to spell ninth wrong. Who puts an E in there? You're right. Then again, maybe it means something. Well, yeah, the E is there because it's a bad, it's an anagram, and they couldn't make it fit correctly. Oops. Whoopsie! Whoopsies! You know what it means? The Latin part. It means remember that you will die. Hey now, give me a little credit. Even I know what Memento Mori means. You see it all over the place. As far as I know, it translates to something like be aware of death or remember your mortality. Never forget that we all die someday. I guess it's all it's a sort of cautionary thing. What about the other part? It's exactly what it says on the tin, right? Some sort of condition about lions and sons. Mm. Anything come to mind? No, nothing. Really? Not the fact that there's a lion eating a sun in every room of every, like, throughout the entire escape room? We've seen, like, seven at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're everywhere. Yeah. at all. <coughs> what about you? Me? Huh. Well, let's see. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. Memento Mori if the ninth lion ate the sun. And I repeated the words over and over again in my head, but nothing. Whatever they meant, it was beyond me. But perhaps Phi. Latin. Huh? Don't you know Latin? Maybe you could figure out more, well, figure more of it out. All than most people, I guess, but I'm not an expert. Then how'd you know that phrase? Elapsum semel occasionum non ipse poltes lupita reprehensere. Oh, that. That's from, um, this. She unpinned the brooch, for, uh, brooch from her chest as she spoke and held it out to me. I hesitated for a moment, then took it. Look at the back. I turned it over. Alpazum semelokivim sem don pivis mompotos lupiter reprehendrender. Oh, it's Eupiter. That's a capital I. Eupiter. Because that's Jupiter. Yep. So I guess the I is pronounced like a J in Latin, huh? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Why? Because it's a dead language, Keith, and they all died out being bad at English. <laughs> what is this? A memento of my late mother. Gross. Well, I guess it's something like a memento. 
grosser. We what does it like mean? a memento. Isn't if it's from her mother, it's a memento. The end. Unless her mother isn't real. Oh. <laughs> She's not real. <laughs> it's an imaginary memento for my imaginary mother. <laughs> I was raised by foster parents, and they told me where the brooch had come from. Gross. Apparently, it was the only thing my mother had left behind. Not even like a will or <laughs> like, you know, a piece of paper that said, hey, I love you, daughter. Thanks for being born or something like fuck. I messed up. What about your father? I don't have one. I uh, guess you say I was a bastard. I never saw his face and I don't know his name. You and you've remained a bastard. <laughs> that's not know if he's alive. I don't. I, well, okay. First of all, I don't. That's not how a bastard works. Like you have a father and you usually know who the father is, but you just don't like you know is it, how is it not how a bastard works because she said i don't have a father you could say i'm a bastard no if you're a bastard you have a father you just don't either know who the father is or you don't care well, like i mean she's definitely acknowledging that he exists well now she is but when she said i don't have a father it's like whoa girl people well, have fathers it's this is splitting this is the most splitting well, hairs she, ever she it's a future she could have met in like in vitro fertilization i don't know <laughs> You still have a father when that happens. Well, yeah, but again, that would make that would be like literally not having a father because you didn't have a father, more or less. Okay. Oh. I couldn't think of anything else to say, so I just handed her back the brooch. Brooch. That has got to be almost like a prayer for me. Pr Whenever I had to make a tough decision, I'd say it to myself. Sometimes I'd just repeat it over and over like a chant. Before long, I had it memorized. Got me interested in Latin, and I started studying the language. That's Elopsum, unfortunate. Simel, occasionum, non ipsi protest, Jupiter, reprehendere. Not even Jupiter can find a lost opportunity. Sounds nice, doesn't it? But... No, it actually... Honestly, the Latin sounds horrible. It's like a really choppy, awkward yeah. like, tongue twister of a sentence that doesn't flow at all. Ain't Isn't no that most Latin, though? Ain't no carpe diem in there. <laughs> I feel like most Latin is just a like a tongue twister. Well, yeah, it, there's nothing nothing about it sounds good. Maybe it sounds good to Japanese people. I don't know. No. How would you know? You're not Japanese. You because can't. I know. You Jap can't speak for their culture. I can because I know Japanese is a language, and I know that would be an incredibly annoying thing to say. Yeah, but it as a Japanese sound person. cool. <laughs> Japanese is hard to say, but English people think it sounds cool. <laughs> Garuga mesh. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? It seems kind of funny now. Thanks. I mean, look at us. We've done what Jupiter can't. We can find our lost opportunities. Yeah, it's, it's cool that your orphan brooch was foreshadowing for this. <laughs> it's really weird. It's a really weird reach. Um, also, uh, More uh, uh by the way. Jupiter doesn't exist as a being. He's like a cosmic entity, which means he doesn't exist. So Jupiter can't find anything. Actually, wow! You sure got him on the whole. Gods aren't real. Well, she's acting That's like. That's why I followed you here. I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you about all this alone. Yeah, I agree. There's something else we need to do too, though. Find the number two bomb. Exactly. So we should get going. I'm pretty sure the bomb isn't in here. There's nowhere to hide it. So. Those pipes, right there. <laughs> You're saying we should go somewhere else? Yeah. Well, come on, don't just stand there. We need to get a move on. Without waiting for a reply, she turned and star uh, started toward one of the exits. What if they had the bomb up in that vent? I followed. That would be really impressive if they climbed There's, up there. Yeah, they climbed up that pipe. There's a zigzag one. No. Yeah. No. This isn't 999. Hide it uh, above the ceiling panels in the elevator. In the light. Why didn't they just put the bomb in between the uh, the elevators? Anywhere, really. There's a lot of really good places you could hide a bomb where no one would find it. But <laughs> so far, the two of them we found, found are just in the open, sitting there. Yeah, one was on a tree. Like, Have, we, have we found the number two bomb in a different timeline yet? No. <laughs> oh, wait, yes. Boy, hollow out a book and just slip it in there. Where, 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 where was the number two bomb? Number two bombs in the crew oh, quarters. No. no. It's we in have... the chem lab. Number two? No, that's zero. No, we never found zero, did we? I thought we did. No. I thought the whole twist of zero is we don't know what the fuck even zero would be. 
Either way, we've definitely found three bombs so far. Yes. One in crew quarters, one in the chem lab, and one where we just found it. The tree. Uh, the tree. The, the, the garden. Gardens. Bee garden. Which I think I later found it was like biotech garden or something or bio something. Biome garden? Yeah. Good place to hide a bomb. Now where the hell do we start looking? It's too bad I can't remember from the morphogenic fields where the other bomb is. Yeah. God damn it. I doubt it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. <laughs> So what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now get started. Oh! It would take so long to search every book to see if one of them's hollowed out to have a bomb inside it. I don't think it'd be hollowed out to have a bomb. It would just be just behind the pages book. out. I turned to a corner. I turned to a corner of the room and began to look while Vi spoke. What I would do is I'd rip out every single page of the book, so what? it's just a, so it's just a cover, and then just put the cover back, but with the bomb inside. The chances of anyone finding it is so low, especially if it's on like the top left shelf or something where it's hard to reach. Why wouldn't you just take the book out and then just put the bomb behind it and then put the book back? Well, presumably the bu the books are flat flush to the wall. Uh, no. Those shelves look way too deep. They could be. Then it's even easier. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Maybe they shoved it on the bear's ass. It's probably in that red book. Maybe the bear swallowed the sun, meaning the, the, the annihilation bomb. <laughs> It's just in there. I mean, not lion, not bear. It'd be really funny if it was the red book, though. It stands out so much. Like, they really fucked us up. Dio's just like, oh, what that book looks like a good place like, to hide something. Was that book glowing hot with the fucking, like, bomb inside or something? No, it had the sun. <laughs> Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. No. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. No. Worlds. Yes. I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. What? Nani? Nani? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Oh my god. Stop with your Wikipedia searching. <laughs> well, kind of. I think I've heard of it once or twice. Hmm. Oh, well. I'll just explain it. Let's say... Hmm. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh. Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did as she asked. Praise the sun! Oh my god, oh. so many options. Wow, we get, uh, we get uh, others? <laughs> I read that has put hands on nips. <laughs> I mean, Others. Moonwalk, tap dance, blow a kiss, cheer. Dude. Wait. Oh. That's all of them. Dude, moonwalk! Obviously. Slide, slide, slide. Was that supposed to be moonwalking? Yeah. I'm pretty good, huh? Uh, yeah, sure. But you might want to try going backward next time, not forward. Sigma, are you a PhD student or not? Why? Why? I don't is, even know how to moonwalk. God, they just accept even, anyone into Harvard. Why is Sigma alive? <laughs> also, I thought that isn't this like? Oh no, never mind. I thought it was like twenty one hundred or something. I was like, how the fuck do people? Hopefully, like all this talk about seeing other worlds makes them realize they could see the world where they saw the, found the bomb already. Just Wait, how old is Sigma? Like, why are they even searching with their eyes and bodies if they could jump times to find it? Yeah. Where are you even? Were you even looking? I was going backwards. Slide, slide, slide. I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that. I regret picking this option. Anyway, you just did the moonwalk, right? Right. But you could have chosen to scratch your head or cross your arms. Now maybe there are other sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. I just want to point out that that might be the first time we've ever been able to... Well, no. It's all, it's one of the only times we've had been able to choose something besides what flowchart path to go down. Yeah. The the other exception, the other the other option being which what order do you want to do these three do these rooms in for those yeah out sessions. Those the, like that micro ups uh that micro choice is kind of the point of visual novels. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to like alarm you, but like that is. The what whole point are. of a visual novel is that you make these micro choices. It really and then, threw me for a loop to see one. I'm like, yeah. 
A dialogue choice? So what's happening? So like, if you the idea is that you you have multiple micro choices that can lead into a major choice, and that major choice then yeah. changes the story. Yeah. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off, on and on into infinity. <laughs> Every time you take a poop, another person an dies. <laughs> Where a version of you did something different. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Mm. Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Well, no, no, no. Okay, multiverse. It's not life. other worlds. It's other realities because other worlds implies. I don't think that's a meaningful difference. It is. Other worlds implies that there's another place, an, an actual another real place that exists that those things are happening in, but it's not because it doesn't occur. It doesn't, those those choices that are being made do not occur within our reality. Ergo, it is not an actual thing physically happening within our realm. So it's not an, a world is a physical place. Reality is a different place. What? Reality I, I think you're really getting like, you're, you're getting kind of like semantics or something while just agreeing with her. Well, it is semantics. Are yeah. you like? Do you not agree that they're that in this? No, I, I'm not denying what she's realities. saying. I'm denying that "world" isn't the right word. I, I, but That's all I'm saying. She already said she doesn't physically mean worlds. She already qualified that statement yeah, a moment ago. So just say realities. Why you got to be an ass? I, yeah, I don't understand how this is a problem. No, it's just for me. I just this is my least favorite interpretation of time travel. Because it's the it's the nihilist like nothing matters version of time travel. Is it? Where every ex every existence matters. Every every single existence with every single choice happens no matter what. So nothing you do matters. That's not true at every, all. Because every version of you happens no matter what. I mean, yeah, but the version that you are is a culmination of the m many many choices that you've made. So you can't just be like ev it does nothing matter. No, it's the part where it's the it's, where the, it's the it's the version of time travel where the time travel is pointless. Because you can't fix anything and nothing matters, and every version of you happens no matter what. As opposed to act like time travel, like the idealism of time travel is like, oh my god, if I go back and I can change the, what happens in the future by changing what happens in the past or whatever. Though you can, you just won't be in that future from. This is the sh it's the shitty dark uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z version of time travel, where it's like, oh man, tr I'm Trunks, and I'm going to go save people from the androids. Oh shit, that only saved completely other people in a different world from the androids, and I'm still fucked because nothing changed. What? Yeah. That's not what happened. That's exactly what happened in Dragon Ball Z. Chunks is like, oh no, androids are bad. I know, I'll go t I'll go back in time. Fuck. That only fixed that world and not mine. Mine's still broken. And, because all it wasn't... and androids killed everything because it's multiverse. Well, as opposed to time travel it's... where there's just a timeline and you can go into the past to change what happens later. Yeah, it's which a little is what different. They use in Agents of Shield. Because it's explained that it's not but it's not actually a... changing the past to change the future happens and that's, as far as I can tell in Agents of Shield and Doctor Who and stuff. Whereas like Dragon Ball Z and this are like every reality will happen no matter what. Hmm. And if you time travel, all you're doing is affecting a different universe than yours at most. And then when you go back, you're still in your universe where nothing changed. That's more accurate. Yeah, um, that, 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 that one's a huge bummer. <laughs> well, you can't actually ever change anything ever. You... No. But the the important part is that you're not it supposed to... It also sucks to. in Star Trek. Well, you're not supposed to be able to change the past. Because time is linear. So if you fuck up the past... It's made up rules. So you can't say which one's more right. Well, I, I'm assuming nine, the fucking zero save guy is trying to be as scientific as possible. I don't think there's a scientific version of time travel. None of it's real. Exactly. Every version of it's made up, so you can't say which one's more real or legit. The one that is not possible to alter the reality that you exist in today is the one that's real. That's the one that has no opportunities for paradoxes and whatnot, but that doesn't, make, that doesn't mean it's real. Because no versions of time travel are real. Well, well, we know that version of time travel. It's just travel. the one that doesn't allow for paradoxes. Well, that's the one we know is real because if time travel is ever invented, nothing has changed because of it. 
that, that's assuming time travel is possible for people to do ever. Yeah, which we don't know because we can't go into the future, but in the future there might be time travel, which they would go into the past like, and change it things. It could still work the other way and just be something we never accomplish. Especially, well, if we, especially if we fuck up and blow this all up like next year. Well, that would be really <laughs> boring. Why did we even like show up in the first place? We should have just stayed behind as like amoebas. Like because we didn't eventually. Involve yeah, like time travel is like the ultimate goal. Why do you here? want time travel so bad if it can't change anything? It doesn't change the current reality, which I don't want to live in anyways. I want to go to a different reality. <laughs> Why would I want to stay in the reality where I already? Well, then at that point, up? you don't even need time travel. You just need like dimension gates. But keep time travel is pointless if it can't yeah. change the past. But the, here's the thing: is like, well, okay, fine. I don't. Then I want to be able to change the realities in the past. Be, you just want to hop realities like sliders. No, that's what I, you want. I want to be able to go into a different reality, but a different reality that is in the past from the current reality that I'm in. Because I don't want to. I don't want to just hop from a reality where I'm like, I'm 30 years old. I'm gonna go to another reality where I'm 30 years old. Time travel doesn't make you younger in any version. No. Except the Days of Future Past version, where, where, where Wolverine gets sent back in time through his own body by Shadowcat. <laughs> but that's a weird one, too. <laughs> no, but the idea is that if I'm going to travel back in the- back- if I'm going to travel back in time, the point of traveling back in time would be to make myself have a better life. Which- which you, though? The, the, you, the you that you are, or the you of that reality. The you of that reality. So you're just gonna time. You're just gonna like benevolently travel to other worlds to make those versions of Andrew happier, and then go back to your shitty life. No, then I would just die because I can't go back to that life. <laughs> the point is, this is the weirdest interpretation. Well, you get the award for strangest goal with well, why, time travel. Why would I? Because here's the thing: I can't alter my own <laughs> reality. Altruistic, but only to your other versions well, of yeah. yourself, why Andrew. The fuck? I'm not gonna go in the past and like stop Hitler from existing. You'll be suicidally like, self-altruistic for other versions of you. Yeah, because I am the only one that matters. So I'll go back in time and fix my You'll reality. Be your own Clara. Yeah, I would just go back, make it so that I live the best life that I wanted, <laughs> and then just be gone. Like, because uh, here's the thing, it's not necessary that I would die, I would sit there and behind the scenes ensure that I always have the perfect life forever, and then I can be literally- be dad, basically. Kinda, but then I get to live vicariously <laughs> through myself, watching uh, myself get to do the things that I could never do, which is great because it's- You just vicariously watch yourself be happy? Yeah, because it would be me being happy, just not the <laughs> me that I am awa aware of right now. What is happening? That would be amazing! What is happening? That's so much better than, like, going into the past, punching a butterfly in the face, and hoping that my girlfriend loves me. Well, I'll give you one like, thing, is that's definitely not a thing I ever thought you would say, is any of that description. <laughs> that was... I've never heard anyone say that. Because I am a <laughs> the genius. The most bizarre, weird, self-destructive fiction where you... How is it self-destructive? I'm fixing... I'm <laughs> helping myself. you're making up a universe where that's how time travel has to work, because the only application is to give other versions of yourself better time. Yeah. <laughs> so then it, right, I'm going to go now before you break me. <laughs> anyway. That's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. Yeah, Keith. I've simplified it a lot. The other issue with many worlds in, in, implementation or whatever is that like <laughs> this, <laughs> You know what the sad thing is? What? This fucking flowchart up here that they're showing is more interesting than the current flowchart oh, yeah, of the none game. None of them work like that. What the fuck? None of them work that. What's that curve in the beginning? I think that curve is you you going back, making a different choice, and then still going down the same path. No, you can't multiverse and linear time travel. <laughs> I don't that's know. Bullshit. Well, I'm just you saying that's both. the only way. That's the only way I can interpret it. I don't know what the fuck dot 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 means in a time stream. Uh, maybe it's an omission. Like there's more in there. You have to zoom in more. I don't know. What? It's really there's some whack. They just do random shit basically. This just all I can tell you is this looks like a more interesting timeline I would like to go down than the current one we're playing. I'll reiterate that the bummer about the bummer about the multi-world thing in the context of Zero Escape is that all of the endings, all of the failed end endings are all canon. Yeah. And that you don't you don't go back in time and undo those. All of those versions of Sigma do actually get killed by really dumb reasons. Yeah. And they all really happen. And that's the, that's like 30 Sigmas <laughs> that just all die for really dumb reasons so that one can eventually escape this bullshit. That's the unfortunate side effect of life. Doesn't have to be human actions, though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. 
The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement what? of a microorganism. Okay. Even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. I'll let microorganisms slide, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Can you say for sure that you are? Uh, oh, we're doing this now. All right. I can tell you that I'm more conscious than air is. Time for some Chinese room discussion. What? All of your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, then you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. <sighs> all of these nothing matter discussions are just annoying. Multiverse and also free will's not real. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision? At that level, how different are you from the air? I'd say not much. What? Uh, a lot. There a are a lot, lot. of. <laughs> I'm a, a, a wind cannot what take those, actions. One of those age old really fun arguments where someone's like, things aren't that different if you just remove all their differences. <laughs> They're basically the same if you ignore absolutely everything. I mean, they're everything's everything's just chemicals, man. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that. Like animals making decisions is equivalent to humans making decisions yeah. in that regard to realities. But wind literally doesn't control itself. Yeah, wind just does. That is a problem. The wind that, doesn't make a choice. The, yeah, you can't. That you can't really argue the idea of multiverse theory being affected by wind. No, because there's you're, no reason it would behave differently from universe to universe. The wind. The only reason the wind would act if it differently. Behaved differently, it would be because of a, of a, a, of a choice of, that a human made yeah. to put something in the way of the wind that would blow in the so direction. Someone has to actually something. change something, and that causes the wind. That's but the wind wouldn't be the cause because the wind always behaves the same way because it has constant rules of how it behaves. Yes, humans like living creatures do not consistently behave but elements on the earth do <laughs> like the sun always rises also like, these two theory these two ideas actually conflict with each other how so because multiverse theory is based on is based on us being conscious and making decisions well yeah like the entire pre the entire basis of multiverse theory isn't that there are subtle chip differences between the universe it's that we do make different choices in different universes and that makes the different universes exist separately from each other as a result of those different choices but if you say if we have no free will and we always make the same choices then there would never be multiverse cuz we don't everything would always play out the same way no i think what she's trying to say is that uh, by default you will always make every choice available what do you mean? Like, say you're, you're given a proposition. I can go on a date with a girl, or I can not go on a date with a girl. Or I can kill myself. I will do all three options in some reality. Which reality am I a part of? I mean, that's definitely not true, because people have motivations and, and like they're preconditioned to do certain things in most situations, and they have personalities and don't just randomly diverge every day all the time. They do. It depends on your. It depends on a multitude of factors that come into play. Like, I may be on the fence about something. Like, I may be on the fence about whether or not I want to go to sleep at one in the morning or one thirty in the morning. And that minor, very minor decision. That'd be free will, though. Well, yeah. I'm not arguing. I'm not saying that humans don't have free will. I'm saying that her ideas are. Uh, uh, and I agree with each you. Other. Then why are you arguing? No, no. Against I'm them? arguing that her. <laughs> why aren't you saying yes? That's correct. No, because I'm <laughs> saying that her, her, the core of her value, which is that there is a timeline for every single choice that could possibly be made, is accurate. In that, in the mini worlds theory, that I, I've given that. My, I, my whole point is that her next point argues against that. Oh, Could, that's what I just said. Why, I, I don't thought, understand why we're why you you just I thought you said, what I said basically. I thought you were saying that my whole point is she did multiverse theory, then says we don't have free will, which conflicts with multiverse theory because the whole premise of that is free will and all the branching choices we make. But we can't have multiverse theory where wow, crazy different reality is happening everywhere based on all our decisions. If you say we don't have free will and therefore don't make decisions. 
The whole basis of people arguing that we don't have free will is that we that our whole life is predestined ahead of us, and we don't we're not going to do any diverse yeah. stuff at that point. And then the, 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 if that's the case, there can't be multiverse theory because there's no decisions to diverge the universes. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying that. I thought you were arguing that uh, they're couldn't. They're doing like a have a cake and eat it too thing, where they're just they're doing completely conflicting ideas and just saying them. Because he just likes to list all the sci-fi concepts that he's heard on the internet. Like Schrodinger's cat. I told you, this dude just, he just, sort of he just Wikipedia's shit. He, it, it does feel like he found a bunch of wiki pages and then just reads them at us. He was just doing- Schrodinger's cat. Multiverse yeah. theory. There's no free will. I, I guarantee Prisoner's you- Prisoner's dilemma. I guarantee you Ice he's, Nine. I, I read this in a novel. Have you read that novel? You know I what? I read that novel. I know That how was somebody else's fictional construct that he used. I know that's kind of fucked up, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's the guy that made uh, what's it called, uh, Slaughterhouse Five and stuff like that. Like he 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 made that up, and this guy just took it. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's not even like a philosophical concept or like anything like that. It's like as if he put a lightsaber in here and called it a lightsaber. It's like you're just you're just borrowing the thing from the that the other guy wrote. I mean, here's the thing that he I have, didn't even use it. <laughs> I have a problem with is with this is it feels like he was like he typed in more from the genetic fields, and then which is played, also apparently a thing that he didn't make up because we've we've heard about that elsewhere. Yeah, but I but the point I'm making is that he it's almost like he looked it up on Wikipedia and then played the Kevin Bacon game <laughs> and saw like what connects all to, the related articles. Yeah, what's the, all the related <laughs> articles in morphogenetic fields? What if I used all of them? Yeah, and he's just going down the list where he's like nine nine nine. He went through all the ones that were like. Yeah, that that all seems like it's connected to morphogenic fields. But then, Ship of Theseus. <laughs> but then the uh, virtuous last award feels like he's pulling at the very edges. He's just of, gonna keep going, and keep going, and yeah, going. Yeah, where you're like, I don't think this has any relation to morphogenetic fields, but I guess all like Schrodinger's cat has nothing to do with morphogenic fields, <laughs> because like there's no reason why like if that was the case, then wouldn't the cat be aware of its current status at all times, and wouldn't you be aware of the current status of the cat because you can access the morphogenetic fields? to know exactly what is inside the box the moment you open the box because you would know like you would be able to yep. know all timelines which if means you have you, if you have an outcome that changes when you observe it does it change when you observe the alternate dimension versions of it that's the thing it's like what the fuck <laughs> oh, are you talking about paradox, this is like what these, does it mean? these two concepts just don't work together you can't have an explanation where you're like there's multiple worlds also schrodinger's cat exists and it's like but also he overlaps schrodinger's cat with the prisoner's dilemma yeah as if they're the same concept and you can just lap, stack them on each other yeah, when Schrodinger's I, cat it was literally just a metaphor to try to explain quantum anything. Quantum anything! <laughs> oh Genius my god! It's just one part of reality. Shut the fuck up! Love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. No, it's not. What I'm saying? No, no, wait, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. <laughs> That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. No, a tornado is created because of hot air and cold air coming together to create a fucking tornado. And the cold air and the hot air move the same way on every universal plane because... Air doesn't decide to blow. The, the fuck. But this writer did. <laughs> but up, up. <laughs> hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, not yet. Let's keep looking while I talk. Fuck. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Here we go. Never mind, don't answer Fucking that. Fucking music, get the fuck out of here. I'll try <laughs> keep it simple for you. Hmm, let's see. Hey, hand me that box, will you? Do you want me to look through the books or not? With this one. Why doesn't she ever do anything? She's not even searching, is she? No. I think she's just standing there. I think she is. Sure. I handed the box to be examined over to her. Uh, she set it down. She set it down on the desk and opened the top. Also. Hmm. Ah, there's a stuffed lion over there. You mean the one eating the sun? The thing that we were just reading a moment ago? Perfect. He's but I found- day too. What? With that, she grabbed the lion and tossed it unceremoniously onto the box. Are they really not going to acknowledge that the thing they're physically holding right now fits the description of the thing on the wall that they were just talking about in the previous room? Are they not going to talk about the fact that you're using a lion for Schrodinger's cat example, and I'm not going to tolerate it because Schrodinger's cat... Yeah, she's gra she grabbed a box and a cat. <laughs> she literally grabbed a yeah. box and a cat. Yeah, she did. God damn it. 
She also uh, took a weight and an ink jar and put them next to the lion. All right. Everything's ready. For what? Ready. Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's Oh my god. We are actually going to talk about multiverse theory, the lack of free will, and Schrodinger's cat in the same room. Keith, you were the one who wanted an eight-hour finale. <laughs> it relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. Hey, I found the bomb. <laughs> it's in the box. She opens the box. The bomb's just in there. Well, <laughs> everything so combined into the into the bomb. <laughs> you transmuted it. <laughs> this is a Roger Cube. <laughs> <laughs> just the Roger Cube. Yeah. It's just like. Uh, the fucking the, the, Schrodinger's the, cat. The box is a Roger cube, and the warning on the wall was just a warning not to put the cat in the box because it'll make it'll because then you'll die. It's like remember you will die when when the cat eats this when the light eats the sun. And they put it in the Roger cube. It just fuses into bomb four. Like it just makes another, <laughs> just makes another one. <laughs> this one doesn't have a code. Get fucked. I would love the I love the idea that the Herodric Cube is a Schrodinger's cat box. The Herodric Cube. The Herodric Cube. <laughs> Stare a while and listen. Stare a while and listen. Now look. Stare a while and listen. I shrugged and peered into the box. You can't even watch a Schrodinger's cat experiment. Why did you even just just say it? What do you see? Well, there's a stuffed lion. From now on, that's a cat. A Shut the cat. fuck up. This is important. Got it? No, it's... The, the state of the cat being alive or dead is not relevant to the conversation. The importance here is how quantum theory works. The cat is just a catalyst So we just learned that, that Sigma's curse of having cat puns does not apply to lions. No. It only applies to cats. Yes. Which now he's doing it. It's a cat meow. Oh man, this again. Sorry, I can't help I it. I find that hard to believe. Ugh, what fine. if he's a? What if he really is a robot, and that's like a, a bug he has? <laughs> oh my god, the cat puns. That's an odd software virus. <laughs> maybe I can just ignore it. Or maybe not a bug. Maybe it's programmed as a joke into him, and he's just stuck with it. You don't have to ignore it if you just let it be a fucking lion, because the goddamn type of animal doesn't matter in a Schrodinger's cat experiment. No, it really doesn't. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. All right. What else do you see? Oh wait, uh, uh, that's not even a, a pond. It's supposed to be a pound. Yeah. That that's doesn't a, work. That's a very bad <laughs> that stretch. That doesn't work at all. Yeah. And a jar of ink. Right. Now the weight is going to be radioactive material. Wait, and you mean... And jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. Are you saying it's a jar of... Mioink? Stop. <laughs> or is it prink? That, that worked even less. Oh my god. What? I'm getting out of here. It's not really full of gas. This is just hypothetical. Imagine that it's full of gas. Wait, why? So, what's the weight? Uh, they, so they put multiple Schrodinger's cat explanations in this game. Yes. Like we already explained it last time, right? Yes. Wait, that wasn't wasn't that in this timeline? Yes. Wait, wait, are we getting Schrodinger's cat explained to us twice in the same timeline? Yes. Did it even spread into other timelines? It's like, oh no, they don't know it in this timeline. We should explain it again. They literally explained because we got the cat and we got the cl the cat book in this timeline because this is the one where we went to the crew quarters. Yes, and we talked about it. Even like even when we went back to the beginning of this branch, we even experienced a Schrodinger's cat ish attempt thing with Alice. Yeah, and oh Jesus, all right. Radioactive material and the jar of ink. It's full of poisonous gas. Exactly. Good work. Now there's well, one other thing you need to know about the jar. Keith. Do what they think we're 12? What does that say? I don't know, I can't read it, it's in Japanese. Fuck! I really wish I could read Japanese. The alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly, but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? You can't open the box to check. 
And you can't hit the box. Uh. <laughs> Obviously, you can't shake it either. It's also been soundproofed, so the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. Okay, first off, that's man, a lot of that's a that's lot a, stipulations. That's a lot of stipulations about this damn box. It's almost like they could have removed the cat from this entire scenario and just made it a matter of whether or not the radioactive material breaks the glass or not, and then it'd be way you need way less explanation to, for why you can't tell the cat's alive. Yeah, it's been soundproofed, and also the cat's mute, and all those other shits happening. Like Jesus, Schrodinger is really bad at this. The alpha particles hit the jar. It breaks, gas fills the box, the cat inhales it, and death will whisk her away. Oh, that worked better than the other ones. <laughs> that one's kind of sad. The, jar doesn't break. <laughs> the cat lives to tell the tale. Haha. <laughs> ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? About 50%. Uh huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? I can't personally know. Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead. Uh. Sure. The cat is paused for dramatic effect. Alive. Nope. You're wrong. It's dead. That's wrong too. Then what's the right That's answer? That it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. What? How does that make any sense? I mean, first of all, it's literally not true because yeah. it definitely is one or the other. <laughs> Quantum mechanic isn't about something literally living in limbo in space. <laughs> the cat doesn't literally the, live in limbo. Literally. Yeah, but I'm saying like if you're doing quantum computing, it's not like the the data is just floating in the ether of nothingness. It's it. God fucking damn it! Qu quantum mechanics is about you not being able to observe the current state of it, which means that it is in constant state between yes and no, which means it is cycling between death and life so rapidly that things are, that something, it is alive, it is dead, but you cannot observe its life or its death because it's happening in both states so quickly. It's the point. But I mean, a cat's definitely just alive or dead. It is. Uh, it feels but like, the, but the, feels we like don't the whole, know the, the whole systems of. Like, but we don't know a, the outcome. A, including an organism in the experiment seems like a, a bad plan all around. It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist. It seems problematic that she's posing the cat as being a literal cat, when I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a metaphorical cat. It is. And it's never, like, no version of it's supposed to be literal. No. It's just a way of explaining a concept, but she's talking about it like it's literal, which breaks the explanation. Yeah, because the idea of, yeah. As the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since okay, we well. we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. That's a, because that's... Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. That's in a... other words, the box is like In other a words. <laughs> we don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. But I missed my chance to get to call the in other words moment after she definitely explained it like three times and yeah. it was definitely time for me to call it and I missed it. Oh. Until we do, it's just a bunch of possibilities. Do you get it? If the cat in the box is possibilities... There's both alive and dead. Right. So, let's open the lid. And when we do... All the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. No. <laughs> Meow. What a relief, huh? Based on your. That's alive. But based on the Adam. Anyway. Example. That's Schrodinger's cat. Okay, but the the Adam example makes no literal fucking sense because you're saying when an atom is spinning, we don't know if we're spinning up, if we're spinning upwards or backwards. Measuring it doesn't actually solidify that atom into that position. It was already doing the spinning of upwards or... That is supposed to be the premise of Schrodinger's cat. Yeah, but it's that... You can't use an actual visible thing to make the example of it. Isn't that the actual example, though? Yeah. No, of, but I'm saying for Schrodinger's cat? It, no, it's the example for Schrodinger's cat. The point I'm saying is that you cannot actually 
see. You can't see quantum. Are you arguing against the premise of Schrodinger's cat? No, no, I'm arguing against or her explanation. Her explanation of it. So what did she do wrong then? I using the atom isn't using the atom and saying that it's uh it's saying that we can we can see the atom and it's moving but we don't know if it's spinning upwards or backwards is not a good example because in Schro like in Schrodinger's cat case we cannot see the cat spinning between death and life spinning <laughs> it's just like <laughs> like it's, you don't you can't see it and then go like is it alive or is it dead? I don't know. It keeps making sounds. I'm like, just I'm just waiting for the relevancy because this is like a really long, complicated explanation for something that I feel like is not actually going to be entirely relevant to the story, and well, it, it's really just going to be a. a <clears throat> it's gonna be like a giant overlong explanation for the idea that oh different things can happen in a multiverse which is like is already explained by the multiverse yeah like we don't need the schrodinger's cat so i'm waiting to see what how this is at, at any way worth incorporating in the story at all the many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness which you already explained so there's another world out there where this cat died no there was no way to kill it in that experiment so no, Sigma. It wasn't a real experiment. It was a model. Do you know what a model is? You might have used them in your PhD courses. No, he yeah. didn't because he hasn't taken That's them apparently. The idea. Are you gonna connect the idea like to that cat tick of yours cleared up? Are you going to connect the idea to reality, no. Phi? No. You just started explaining that like it was important. Can you please connect it to something? Uh, yeah, you're just- you just got done. <laughs> Did you just get bored and decide to explain Ice-9 for no reason? Is that what just happened? Yes. Because that seems what happened is this was a June moment where she just explained something while saying we're in an emergency situation and are low on time. She's gonna like, I'm gonna explain the random concepts I read about in school and not connect it to anything that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Like we just had a time transition of fade to black and come back as if time passed. Well, your story was pretty insane. insane. In the membrane. <laughs> it was almost, one could say, radical. You don't think so? That was pretty radical sick. Just the idea of something being alive and dead at the same time. And if the moment the lid is open determines whether or not the cat's dead, then it's almost like Events in the future can determine the past. Oh my god, are we Schrodinger's cat? And we're alive and dead at the same time in the multiverse until somebody else opens and finds out whether we made it out? No! That's no. not how it works! <laughs> I swear to god! <laughs> I mean, the cat doesn't die when you open the lid, so it must have already been dead. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? What on earth are you talking about? Back. Remember round two of the AB game? When you chose betray, what was my vote? No, 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 Fi, no. This isn't Schrodinger's cat. This was you <laughs> reacting to the other timeline. You did it with your ability to see the other timeline and chose to do the opposite. Th th this is literally just a conditional paradox about whether or not which one of us happens to be seeing the other timeline or not. That's not Schrodinger's cat. Is that your fucking connection? That's why you explain this? That doesn't even work. Ally. What happened this time? I chose Ally and you chose Betray. You can't just take any situation where an outcome changed and say it was Schrodinger's cat. That is, that's not what that means. You can when you don't actually care. Read. <laughs> right. And both times, I put in my vote a full minute before the deadline. When did you push the button? Right before the deadline. I see. Well. That makes this a little easier to explain. I like this explanation, by the way, in all these different timelines where apparently all the other contestants never wait to the last second. It's just us. Whenever we hear about when somebody pressed a button, they always say they pressed it way earlier than the last second. It's just us. That's a weird asshole. We're the bad people. <laughs> if you chose betray, then my vote was ally. If you chose ally, then my vote was betray. 
But I made my choices a whole minute before you made yours. Because you were reacting to the timeline that you already saw. <sighs> Don't you think that's strange? No. 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 It is not Schrodinger's cat. No. You picked Ally in that one timeline because we all agreed to pick Ally. But in the other timeline where you picked Betray, you picked it because you saw a timeline where I picked Betray. That's not Schrodinger's cat. It's not how that works. You, you're not even fitting your own explanation you said a moment ago. It's not quantum anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing it's a, of, it's a, nothing it's a whole about load of, that is quantum. Yeah, it's quantum bullshit. Ah, he just wanted to show off that he heard about Schrodinger's cat as if everyone else Who the it. fuck hasn't heard about Schrodinger's cat? Sigma. <laughs> Conveniently. You so can't even get to college it. without hearing about Schrodinger's cat. Uh, you do see what I'm saying, don't you? Oh, uh, we, we see what you're trying to say. It's not fucking working, and you're saying it in the most inefficient way possible. Almost as if you're written by the author that wrote Zero Escape. <laughs> In other words, that my choice in the future altered your actions in the past. Yeah. From your perspective, there's no other way to interpret it. What? what? Except the one I just said. Wait, what? Your, your example... Oh my god, your example in this case is that your... Your decision between ally and betray is in a con is in a quantum state. I just want Until to point out that none of these fucking explanations add anything to how this game works or the narrative. So, like, this is just—it's just all like filler that we already understand yeah. the flowchart. So it's, everything else, but, this is all redundant. So she's making the claim that apparently you can—that her vote is in a constant state of or is in a constant quantum state until Sigma makes his vote, which isn't true because she said she made it a minute ahead of time, but. The problem here is that it's under you can't the say it's, pick, people pressing buttons in reality is quantum mechanics. Well, it, the quantum mechanics not, option comes into play. That's just ignorance. That's just you not knowing about a thing and whether that's happening. I can't call all of Africa quantum right now because I'm not looking at it. You can't because no, you I cannot. Can't. You you're not physically. No, that's not how it works. It is when you're Don't not. Don't do intentional bad science on me right now. I can't it, take you I mean, doing it too. It just depends on how you, how much of the Wikipedia article you read. Uh, if you stop at the if first you stop sentence, at the first sentence <laughs> then, the, then if you stop at the first sentence, the rest could mean anything. Yeah. Quantum. I, I think like, the first sentence of quantum mechanics is like the state of being observed. And, like, so I think he just read that so and was like, just stop that reading it. He's like, ooh, based on that idea, the rest could mean anything. And I could make it up and it'll all be true, Schrodinger's cat. Oh my god. Please read this. I, I wrote autism instead of quantum. What? <laughs> Please read. We gotta get through this. We gotta escape this room. We've been here. Now that I thought about it, one, uh, one round one had been the same. When I chose an ally, Alice had chosen betray. It's this is also not quantum mechanics. And when I chose a betray, she had done the opposite. It is just. Uh, I don't think he understands, the writer doesn't understand how morphogenic fields ruins the concept of Schrodinger's cat because it's people literally observing other realities and then making dis informed decisions based on that. Which is not just quantum anything, that's just being able to see other timelines. Look at this die. I found it over there. Let me give you one last example. <sighs> Please don't. I was literally about to say in other words and here she is saying basically that. She's just fucking iterating for like an hour. I thought we had limited time. As she spoke, she tossed the die into the box and quickly shut the lid. Yahtzee. Alright, answer this question. What number is the die on? There's six options on the die. Like, that's not how no quantum works. Care. Quantum is in a state of on or off, you motherfucker. It's two fucking variables. We gotta, God. Power, we gotta power through this. Damn it. We gotta power through One, this. One, maybe. Okay. I'm going to open the lid. Good job. Oh my god. You got it right. That was just a fluke. Was it? Yes. Huh? Let's think about what was going on before I opened the lid. What number was the die on? <sighs> One, of course. Have you been paying attention? The die we, we're is paying still plenty a attention. Of atoms, isn't it? <sighs> we're we're playing paying attention. You're just a fucking idiot, and nothing you say actually makes sense. Okay, just press. That's not how it works. Just press you can reasonably suggest that it was made of some different kind of matter. Oh my God, she's so rude while being wrong. Wait, you're so so you're saying that before you open the lid. The die was on all the numbers. The die was actually a cat! Uh -huh. 
That's one way to look at it, at least. Yeah, you're right, because I'm right. Everyone's right with, with Schrodinger's cat. Fuck it, everyone's right all the time until you observe it. <laughs> I would like a book on that. Everyone's right with Schrodinger's cat. Just like, it's just a book explaining that everybody. According to Schrodinger's cat, I've got a degree in literature. <laughs> you can't prove it wrong. You're gonna open my head. And then when you open the lid, it was just one number. Or it might have become that number when you declared which one it was. How about you take a lesson from the book in the back Your of the shelf and the design a better has one? An effect on the past. That's crazy. I want to point out that the music literally dropped out because that was going to be that was supposed to be an earth shattering statement that wrecks us to our core. What was that's where the your your choices in the future affect the past. The music stopped like that was like <gasps> mic drop. <laughs> I'm like, we've been doing it for 55 hours. <laughs> We're so fucking aware of it right now. It kind of feels bad to be explained about the mechanic that you anyway, have been playing. That's all I wanted to say. It's like Cortana in Halo 3 being like, <gasps> B throws a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, left trigger throws a grenade, I think. B is melee shit. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? It's like just oh, and then the music cuts out and like the arbiter's mandibles open a little bit, like slack jaw, like <gasps> Oh my god. <laughs> like, this is earth shattering. <laughs> I would uh, be upset. We got a little off topic there, but I think I made my point. No. no. Fucking. You made your point in the first topic and then just kind of fucking showed off for a while. Yeah. yeah. You remember that one? That was, that was the one. That was the only one you needed. For each and every possibility. I'm glad we went back, though, so you could do in other words. You and I seem to be able to jump from branch to branch. It's not... Of course, our bodies aren't doing the jumping. Our consciousnesses just sort of dive into other versions of ourselves and no. other worlds. No! No! More of a genetic field is not about fucking diving! How do you forget your own goddamn concept? You made it 999, you Fuck! I believe in an alternate version of, of multiple reality theory where reality splits every time someone says in other words <laughs> Just over and over again. The, the setup here is that your consciousness is gathering information or receiving signals this yeah, is, she's actually, she's wrong. This is based on your own fucking explanation of it, you piece of shit. The brain well, is no, receiving- no. No. Yes? He said no. this in 999. Yes, but no. She's wrong, but she, she's not contradicting herself. Her interpretation is wrong. Yeah. She doesn't know about the signals of receivers and senders and shit like that. She's making up her own explanation of what she's seen so far. Which is not which is, hopping. Which is why it's wrong. Your body is not hopping. She's her, she's not contradicting herself. There, there is a one stream timeline. And that is the timeline where your brain receives all of the signals from all the other failures and converges it into one fucking brain, which is able to come with the solution. That is, that is not that, necessarily that either. Well, that's exactly all the how different timelines can see each other sometimes. But that's the thing. It's definitely not one single receiver and all the other ones are senders because they definitely see. No, no. They definitely see stuff when they're it's, in the timelines where they fail to. No, you're, you're still a receiver, but. Your brain is, you're not hopping around. What happens is at the state of failure, your brain sends out all of its data to another person, to all the others. No. Yes, it's, yes. I don't when, think that's accurate. When you die, so when you, like, so when you take a route where Sigma dies, he send he sends out as a. The problem with that idea is that we, we, we use information from timelines where we have zero confirmation of Sigma dying. Like, such as when he's a spaceman, and he's like, that's the code, and then we f used that code when we were in the garden, and we recited that, but nothing happened to that Sigma. We don't, well, we don't, we don't get to see the end of that Sigma's timeline. Yeah, what do you think, maybe he dies 50 years later? <laughs> he's on the moon! I don't know. He's dead. We don't know what happened. We're all dead. That's the a really frustrating thing about how many times the game just ends for no reason. Yeah. Is that we don't even know why it ended. Well, that's the thing, is the idea, the premise... Like, we got karate chopped, and then just a game over. I'm like, why? <laughs> because the, the premise of what Ace built up, or said in the fucking first one, was that the idea is that your brain 
like your brain is basically running through it's like it's like a brute force machine it's running through every single available option and when it fails it sends out and to all the other ones that are currently running through and says like hey yo just letting you know don't do this one thing it fucks up and then you just keep going that way until one of the brains until one of your stupid consciousnesses has all has enough information to make the exact correct choice which is the whole premise be- behind um uh, fucking Santa talking about the mouse thing, where you throw enough mice in there, and they there keep, was the mouse idea, yeah. yeah, where they would like go somewhere and drown, and they, and then, they keep and dying and dying and dying, yes. and eventually one mouse is like, go the other way. They do contextualize it in bad in bad mistakes, but I don't know if they've ever actually said that you have to die. I that might be well, that they, might be a, a they've leap. never given an example in the game's logic where you don't actually die. Yeah. Because of a bad mistake. That's because that's the only way that they know how to contextualize failure, especially when they make a death game. But also because they're very repetitive in their endings. I hate this game. Let's go on. Whoa! (laughs) I think I get it now. That's how you knew my name, right? You jumped in from another world. Uh, That's how you knew all those other things you shouldn't have known. Yeah. That's the best I can figure out, at least. Unfortunately, it seems like we don't retain all our memories when we jump. What? Maybe we only remember particularly important things. I'm not sure how it works. Doesn't Sigma have like a photo, like, graphic brain? Well, you, no, it's just a matter of what you do or do or do not send or receive. Like, she's just wrong. <laughs> like, either they're retconning what happened in- Either they're retconning what happened in 99, which was something being said by actual experts that knew about how it worked, Whereas she's just interpreting shit on the fly in the game itself. Uh, like, either they're retconning that, or she's just wrong. And I'm going with she's wrong. Like, this is just her somewhat reasonable assumption about how this might work, because she thinks that when you die, you jump to a different reality and inhabit that body. But what's actually happening is there's senders and receivers, and the receivers are getting, are getting signals from the sending, and you kind of... It's a little luck of the draw of what happens to get sense, and that's no, why you I'm, don't remember everything. I'm just gonna go with this. Yeah. You're both right. Yay. Because, much like Schrodinger's cat, I can't observe either of them being the <laughs> truth. God damn it. But whatever the reason, it seems to be fairly limited. And often, we don't seem to remember jumping at all. Things will just sort of pop up. That's why when someone asks us how we know X, all we can think of is to say, I just knew. Yeah. Some people call it deja vu. Fuckhead. What's causing this then? I don't remember ever doing this before, so why would it start now? If we knew that, I don't think we'd be having so much trouble. It's just... Just what? Well, I'm pretty sure it has to do with why we're locked up in here. There's Uh-oh. no way this doesn't have something to do with whatever Zero Senior's trying to do. Oh? We have left that Schrodinger's cat book in the crew quarters. Uh, being a fuckhead. Huh? You aren't kidding, are you? Maybe this is some sort of huge Schrodinger's cat experiment. And all nine of us are locked up inside the box, right, meow? What if you've got it backwards? Backwards? We're outside of the box, and the rest of the world is inside. Oh my god! Meaning, like, whether or not reality's been destroyed? Or I mean, everyone's dead of Radical Six? Then the moment we step out of this place. Yeah, we might be determining the history of the world outside. But we've already listened to an audio log, and that audio log explains that everybody already died, which is an observation, unless that was a simulation, like, example and not real. But Tempioji confirmed that it was real. Because it said then, that- then, then the outside of the box is already- the, then the world's already been observed, so it's not Schrodinger's cat. Well, Temi- remember, Tempioji volunteered for this. So he was he was outside before going in here. Uh, so he knows the current state of the world, and theoretically, based on the backstory that uh, Wizkid gave us, um, is that the world is in a shitty apocalypse shandle, shambles. Yeah, that makes it not Schrodinger. So that means it's already observed. What? Anyway. No way. The only way, the only, the only lines you're allowed to read are just your shock and awe about how much of a genius he is. <laughs> is this hell? 